Listening to the Dead by Katie Hymns Ruby Shoes Have you brushed your teeth? No. Go and brush them. I can't. Ruby. Will you go in first? Go in where? The bathroom. Why? There's a lady in there. In the bathroom? She's lying in the bath. Ruby. She is. She's lying there with her eyes all starey. There's no one. Are you sure? There's no one else in here except me, okay? She must have gone. Okay. She was more of a girl than a lady. She was wearing a dress, this blue dress, like the olden days. I've seen her before. I saw her last year in the garden. She came walking out the pond and it made me feel funny. And I asked her, I said, what's your name? And she was going to speak to me. She opened her mouth to speak. But then Dad switched on the lawnmower and I think the noise scared her away. Can you just brush your teeth? I don't want you to think I'm a liar. I don't. I don't think you're a liar. That's good. So you do believe me then? Let's talk about it in the morning, shall we? Just say it. Just say that you believe me. Ruby. Just say it. Just say I believe you and I'll go to sleep. I'm very tired. Just say it. I can't. Why not? Ruby, I'm exhausted. I want to sit down with a Cinzano, a cigarette and Coronation Street. That's all I want, all right. All right, sorry. It's all right. Hey, Rubes. What? I love you. I love you too. Night, night. Sleep tight. Hope the bugs don't bite. Can you leave the light on? Oh. It's just a imagination. It worries me. Why? I could talk to the doctor. And say what? I don't know. She'll grow out of it. I just get scared that there's something wrong with her. Peggy. She's got such a funny look on her face sometimes. <sighs> How do you mean? Like she really can hear things or even see things. Peggy. That's why I want to take her to the doctor. She's imaginative. Some kids are like that. I was never like that. Oh, me neither. But some kids are. Look, she'd probably be very creative, very artistic, sensitive. I just want her to be normal. What's normal? I am. I'm normal. And you want her to be like you? Well, yes. Yes, I do. Most people want their kids to be like them. If they were honest with themselves, I think it's a completely natural thing to want. She's her own girl, Peggy. I know she is. She's lovely. I know. I know she is. Will you come to our school and do a talk? A talk? About being a postman. Miss Violet wants mums and dads to come in and talk about their jobs and that. Will you do it? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm sure I could do that. You have to talk about the good bits and the bad bits and why you wanted to do it in the first place and whether it's like what you thought it would be. OK. Can I tell her then? Can I tell her that you'll do it? Yeah, sure. Hey, look. What? There's a van outside 22. Someone's moving in. Can I go and say hello? Uh, There's a boy. Can I go and say hello to the boy? You haven't finished your sugar puffs. I don't like them. A minute ago, you said you loved them. I've changed my mind. Well, who's going to eat them now? You. Me? Yeah, if you want. Who are you? I'm Niche. I'm Ruby. I'm eight and a half. I'm eight and a half, too. Are you going to live here? Yeah. That's good, because that house has been empty for ages. Oh. There's an old lady who lived here, but she died. I still see her sometimes. She waves at me from the top window. Maybe that's the room she died in. Oh, that's my room. Oh, well, she's not there right now. Maybe she's left. Maybe she's moved out since you moved in. I hope so. She was really nice when she was alive. She gave me a packet of mummy mint. A whole packet? Yeah, she wouldn't hurt you. Ghosts don't hurt people. Not the ones I've met, but I'm not supposed to talk about it. My mum doesn't like it. I think it upsets her. Me and Nish chat together today. I'm like his friend who's helping him. Well, that's great, Ruby. Miss Violet told me to look after him and show him where the dinner hall is and where to hang his coat. Don't talk with your mouth full. Miss Violet said because he lived in my street, I could be the one to be his friend. Ruby. What? Finish chewing and then speak. Miss Violet gave me a gold star today. I love Miss Violet. She's really pretty and she wears really nice clothes. She never shouts like Miss Andrews. And Dad's going to go in and give a talk about being a postman. Really? Yeah. yeah. Since when? Ruby asked me. You never said. <sighs> what was I supposed to say? Thank you, Mr Telly. Can we give Mr Telly a round of applause? 
Would anyone like to ask Mr Tully a question? Can I, even though he's my dad? Of course, why not? Hello, Dad. Hello, Ruby. What I want to ask is, is it what you always wanted to do, right from when you were a child? Was it like your life's ambition? Um, not really, no. What did you want to do? Well, I can't remember, to be honest. Uh, probably a football player. Can I ask a question? Yes, Nish, go on. Have you always been a postman, all of your life? Or did you do something else first? That's a good question, Nish. Mr Tully, have you always been a postman? <laughs> well, I wasn't born a postman, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Um, well, in actual fact, before I became a postman, I was an entertainer. Really? It was silly. It was a sort of variety act. What's a variety act? Well, can you tell us about it? Oh, I, I used to be in these shows that had all kinds of different performers. Singing, paper terrors, comedians telling jokes, dancing dogs. Dancing dogs? Magic acts. All that sort of thing. Did you have a dancing dog? No, no. <laughs> Did you sing? Oh, no. Were you a comedian? No, because I couldn't tell jokes for Tuffy. <laughs> I don't believe that. It's true. I could never remember the punchlines. So what did you do then? I had a kind of magic act. Magic? Yeah, but I wasn't very good at that either. <laughs> so I became a postman. Well, Mr Tully, it's been a real pleasure to hear you talk today. Thank you. No, thank you, Miss Violet. Then Frank Tully looked at Miss Violet and smiled his best smile. Dad's really good. Miss Violet was really pleased. That's good. I'm proud of you, Dad. <laughs> well, well, thank you, Ruby. I'll get it. Hello, Mr Tully. Can Ruby come out? Yeah, but she's just finishing her tea. Do you want to come in? Uh, yeah, OK. You can have some ice cream with us. I think we're having Arctic roll. OK. Hi, Anish. All right, Ruby. We're having Arctic roll. I told him. That's the only reason he came in. Have you ever eaten Arctic roll, Nish? Can we go out after? Can we go out and play? There was a single tree in Ruby's back garden, a sycamore, and it was large enough and strong enough for two eight-year-olds to sit up on it and look at the sky. When I grow up, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to be a doctor. I think you'll be a good doctor. I think you'll be a good artist. You've got a spider on your face. A spider! <laughs> Nish tried to wipe the spider away and somehow fell out of the tree. <laughs> Cried real tears. Where does it hurt? It's my ankle. Can you stand up? Ow! OK, OK, stay still. I think it's broken. Wait a minute, wait a minute, just stay still. I can't, it hurts. Just stay still, please just stay still, just for a moment. All I need is a moment. What are you doing? Do you trust me? Yeah. OK, what are you going to do? I'm going to keep my hands on your ankle and I'm going to sing a song. I know it sounds really weird, but I think it might make you better. OK. Sweet and low, sweet and low, wind of the western sea. Low, low, breathe and blow, wind of the western sea. What are you doing? Niche fell out of the tree. I hurt my ankle. Ruby. What? Nish, go home. Why are you so angry? Nish. Yeah? Go home now. He can walk on it. <laughs> I'm not happy with you. We weren't doing anything bad. I want to marry him. Ruby. I do. You're too young. I know, I know that. I'm not stupid. I mean, when we grow up. What does his mother say? About us getting married. What does Nish's mother say about how much time you two spend together? She doesn't say anything. Maybe I should talk to her. About what? About how much time you spend together. She doesn't mind. She doesn't mind at all. I think I'll have a word with her. Why? Because it's too much, Ruby. <sighs> she should be playing with girls, not boys. Don't be daft. What do you think they get up to? And what do you think they get up to? I don't know. That's what worries me. They're just kids. She thinks she's going to marry him. Well, maybe she will. Don't be ridiculous, Frank. Some people do. Some people do marry the childhood sweethearts. Well, they're not sweethearts. Well, they do love each other. Anyone can see that. She's a very imaginative girl. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say imaginative. Very sensitive. Bit of a dreamer. Head in the clouds. Oh, no great harm in that, is there? I just want her to be all right, you know. 
in life. <laughs> well, she's only eight, Peggy. I know, I know. And did you see her painting? What painting? In the hall. Have a look on your way out. It's a painting of a girl lying in the bath in a blue dress. It's quite, well, I think it's extraordinary. I think she's very gifted. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Violet. Frank shook Miss Violet's hand and held on to it a moment too long. That painting, the girl in the bath, it disturbed me. Why? I don't know. Just gave me a funny feeling. I thought it was brilliant. It was good, yeah. I told you. She's gifted. She's gifted. Miss Violet certainly seems impressed. Oh, you just can't help yourself, can you? What? I saw you, Frank. I don't know what you're talking about. Making eyes at Miss Violet. I wasn't. She's young enough to be your daughter. She is not. She was making eyes at you as well. Was she? Ow! A bloody driving woman! Jesus, what was that for? You know. I don't. I saw your picture. Did you like it? Um, yes. Of course I did. It's in the hall because it's one of the best. I know. I'm the only one in my whole class with a picture in the hall. Like all the others are older, like an older years. It's very good, yes. <clears throat> Ruby? Yeah? Where did she come from, that woman? What do you mean? Is she someone you've seen in real life? No. A little while ago, you said that there was a lady lying in the bath. When did I say that? A few weeks ago. I don't remember that. Ruby was learning to hide the truth. Did you just wave at someone? Wave? You looked like you were waving at someone. I wasn't. In fact, Ruby had been waving at a boy. A boy only slightly older than herself. He had red hair and freckles, and his face was pressed against the window. She wanted to speak to him, but it was impossible with her mother there. Then the doorbell rang. I'll get it. Hello, Mrs Tully. Can Ruby come out? No. Why? She's having her breakfast. Can she come out after her breakfast? No. Why not? Because we're going shopping for shoes. But I've got something I need to ask her. I can take a message. But it's private. Private? Yeah. He said it was private. What he wanted to ask her was private. So? So what do you think it was? How should I know? That's becoming your catchphrase, that is. <laughs> well, how on earth would I know what it was he wanted to ask her? I don't like it. Don't like what? Whatever's going on. Nothing's going on. How do you know? How do you know if you don't know what he wanted to ask me? I mean, what could it be that he couldn't tell me? Something innocent, something harmless. If it's so innocent and so harmless, then why wouldn't he say what it was? Because he's a child and it's private to him. What are you talking about? Nothing. Nothing, sweetheart. Can I choose my own shoes? Can I have the ones with the red sequins? Yes. No. Please, they're like ruby red. Why can't she have them? Because they're not sensible. They've got a heel. Only a little one. Thanks. Oh, please, please, please. They're not practical, Ruby. Can I at least try them on? Yeah. No. No, let her try them on. No, because then we'll end up buying them. Ruby skipped out of the shop in her ruby red slippers. They would remain her most favourite shoes that she ever, ever wore. If only she'd kept them when she grew up. Then they might have helped her find her way home. But she was only eight years old and had never seen the Wizard of Oz. I keep seeing this boy. What boy? A dead boy. All oh, right. I saw him last week when I was on the bus with my mum. And then I saw him again this morning when I was eating Rice Krispies. He was looking through the kitchen window like he wanted to come in. Why don't you ask him what he wants? I would do, but then my mum's always there. Do you like my shoes? Yeah, they're nice. Don't you think the sequins look like rubies? I don't know what rubies look like. They look like sequins. Do you think you could cure my nan? What? Well, you know my ankle was broke and you fixed it? Yeah. Well, my nan, she's got cancer in her spine. If you put your hands on her back and you sang that song, then you could save her, couldn't you? I don't know. Don't you want to? It's not that. I'd love to. I'd love to go around saving people and all that. Especially your nan. She's, like, the first person I would save. But the thing is, it's only happened once with you. Like, I got this funny feeling in my hands. Sort of tingling feeling. And then... And I knew I could stop your ankle hurting, but that's only ever happened once. If I ever get that feeling again, I promise you I'll run round to yours and we'll cure your nan. OK? OK. Are you all right? What did you want to ask me? Ruby? Yeah? Are you in bed? Yeah. Are you wearing your shoes? No. Ruby? What? 
You can't wear them in bed. Please. Don't be ridiculous. But I love them. I love them so much. Take them off. Okay, okay, I'll try and tell her. What are you whispering about? You're not going to like this, but you should like it, really. What? There's a boy sitting next to me. What do you mean? You can't see him, but I can. He says he's your brother. He's got red <laughs> hair and freckles and he's about ten years old. Ruby. And he says he's your brother who died. I don't know you had a brother who died. Ruby, this isn't funny. I know, it's not funny, it's sad. Stop it, right now. He's got a message. Stop it. I've got to tell you this thing he said. Ruby. He said that you mustn't feel bad, that he's Ruby, dead and I you're mean alive. It. That's what he said, Mum. He really did say it. Why don't you believe me? You can talk to him. What is going on? She must have heard me talking to you. She must have sneaked downstairs one night and listened in, listened in to me talking to you. Didn't, Dad, I didn't. OK, both of you, calm down. And now she's pretending that she can hear his ghost. I'm not pretending, Dad, I'm not. He's right here. He says his name is Michael. I don't understand why you're doing this. Is that your dad's car? Yeah. Is that your dad? I think so. He's kissing Miss Violet. Oh, yeah. Where are you going? I'm going to speak to them. Ruby? Oh, uh, um, hello, love. Hello, Dad. Um... Hello, Miss Violet. Hello, Ruby. Are you two having an affair? <laughs> no. <laughs> Definitely not. No chance. We were just talking. We saw you kissing. Oh, hello, Nish. Hello, Mr Tolly. Are you going to get divorced from my mum and marry Miss Violet? Uh, no. Definitely not. I really like you, Miss Violet, and if I didn't already have a mum, if she had, like, gone and died in a car accident or something, then I think you'd be quite good as a replacement. Thank you, I think. But the thing is, she's not dead, she's alive. So, anyway, yeah, we're just going to the shops. Get some cola bottles. Oh, right, uh, OK, well, uh, well, that's, um, well, that's good. See you later, Dad. Yeah, yeah. See you at school, Miss Violet. Yeah, see you at school, Miss Violet. OK, children, yes, um... See you on Monday. Shit. I told you. What did you tell me? Not to kiss me. Well, you were already sitting in the bloody car. We could have explained that. We could have said you were giving me a lift. Well, it's too late now. Oh, God. Okay, I'll be all right. I could lose my job. <laughs> is that all you're worried about? Well, it is my job, Frank. Have you brushed your teeth? Not yet. Can you go and do it? In a minute. Ruby? I will in a minute. It's getting late. Are you in love with her? Who? It's Violet, obviously. It's, can you keep your voice down? Sorry. <sighs> Listen, Ruby. I really don't want your mother to know about this. I would really like to just keep this between you and me. Do you think... do you think we could do that? But if you're going to get married to Miss Violet, Mum's got to know, because you can't get married to two people, because that's called something like igamy. No, bigamy. Bigamy. Bigamy, it's a funny word. Right, listen, Ruby. Um, <clears throat> well, it was just a kiss, all right? We're not going to get married. We were just kissing, and, and it's, it's not going to happen again. Why? What? Why is it not going to happen again? Uh, because it was a mistake. I just gave her a lift. Why did you give her a lift? Because it was raining. No, it wasn't. <sighs> Look, I gave her a lift because she's very nice and she's very pretty and, and I wanted to kiss her, OK? OK. But I'm not going to kiss her again. Because your mother would kill me, OK? OK. <sighs> so can you just go and brush your teeth and we'll forget about all this, yeah? Dad? Yeah? Do you love Mum or...? Not love, Mum. I love her. I really do. That's good. Sweet and low, sweet and low. While Ruby brushed her teeth, the girl in the blue dress lay in the bath singing. Who are you? My name's Emily. Emily Cartwright. I'm your great great aunt. I drowned when I was 15. Whoa, that's amazing. Who are you talking to? No one, absolutely no one. For many years after this time, Ruby maintained a pretense that there were no voices, that she was a perfectly normal girl with a normal brain. 
It wasn't until her A-level art exam that it all fell apart. Shh. Can you go away? I'm trying to work. This is an exam. Ruby? Yes, sir? You can't whisper. I know, sir. So stop. Was I whispering, sir? Yes, you were. I'm sorry. Please go away. I can't talk now. Ruby? Oh, sorry. I, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to someone else. Ruby hadn't slept for seven nights because she was so nervous about her exams. When she was very tired, she found the ghost more difficult to cope with, more difficult to hide and to hide from. And then it was more difficult to sleep, which made everything worse. What happened? I don't know, sir. I mean, I do know, but I can't tell you. Ruby, I'm worried about you. Oh, don't be. Don't be worried. I'll be all right. Did you take something today? Take something. You've got to be honest with me, otherwise I can't help you. Mr McCarthy was Ruby's favourite teacher. He was sympathetic, he was young, he was interesting. And Ruby trusted him. Do you ever hear anyone breathing? What? Sometimes, just as I'm falling asleep. Usually it's then. I hear someone breathing. And I don't know what to do. I, I can't open my eyes, I can't move my hands or anything. Do you ever get that? Uh, no. Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Like, I don't know, like you think, like you think I'm making it up? I don't think you're making it up, not at all. Well, why are you looking at me like that then? I'm going to ask you a list of questions, is that okay, Ruby? Um, yeah. Can people hear your thoughts? Sorry? Do you believe that other people can hear what you're thinking? Um, no. No, why, why would I think that? Do you believe that people are plotting against you? No. Do you believe that you're getting messages from the television? From the television? Or the newspaper, or any form of technology, such as the radio? Um, no. Do you think you've done something terrible and deserve to be punished? Well, that depends. Well, what about cancer, world wars, natural disasters? Um, what about them? Do you feel responsible for any of these things? No. Why? Do you think I should? No, no, of course not. Not at all. These are just... these are routine questions. OK. Are you concerned that you have a serious illness, something terminal, something seriously alarming, a brain tumour, for instance? No. Do you ever hear noises or sounds or voices that other people don't hear? Yes. Which one? Um, all those things. What are these voices telling you? Well, it depends who they are and where they're from and what they want. Do you ever feel that something is creeping or crawling over your skin? Um, I get a tingling in my hand sometimes. Is that what you meant? I, I get that. I get that feeling and then I know that I can do something for the person I'm with. I can put my hands on them and I can fix them. Fix them? I can heal them. I fixed my friend's ankle once. It was fractured and I healed the bone. He could walk on it just like that. OK. I really did heal his ankle. OK. I know you don't believe me. Is there anyone here now, in the room with us? Um, no. I think maybe it's the atmosphere in here. I mean, it's kind of sterile, don't you think? All that white paint. You think the white paint affects things? I think it does. They want to send her away for a few weeks. What about her exams? She can take them in the autumn. What about college? She can go next year, can't she? All her friends are going this year. All our friends haven't got serious problems. We don't know that she's got serious problems. Frank. What? Well, we don't. I mean, is all this really necessary? How do you mean? I mean, do we have to do this? Well, what do you suggest? That we leave her alone. So you know better than the doctors, is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. Yeah. I think in this instance, I think I do. But if she is schizophrenic, Frank... Which I don't think she is. But if she is, we've got to look after her. We've got to help her. Nish. Yeah? Going away. Where are you going? This place. What place? Where they try and make you better. What's wrong with you? Oh, nothing. Well, why'd you have to go away then? Because of the ghosts. You shouldn't have told anyone. Well, I tried not to, but... When will you be back? Soon. How soon? Do you think I'm mad? No. Promise. I promise. You all right? No. 
Do you want to cuddle? Yeah. I miss her. I miss her too. I wish she was a baby. I wish she was a baby and I could do it all over again and do it differently. Do it all right. Hey, you need to do it right. What are you talking about? But if I'd done it right, I don't think this would be happening. It's not your fault she hears voices, is it? No, of course not, but maybe... There was a way of... A way of what? <laughs> I love her so much. I know you do. I just wanted to be happy. 12th of June, 1979. Dear Ruby, you said I could write you a letter, so this is what this is. Except there's not a lot to tell you. I'm revising loads, so not hardly going out or doing anything interesting that I can tell you about. Hope it's okay where you are. I hope they make you feel better. Although I don't know how they can, when there's nothing really wrong with you in the first place. I think you're an excellent person, Ruby, and I hope you believe that. Come back soon. Love from Niche. 10th of July, 1979. Dear Niche, thank you for your letter. Sorry it's taken me four weeks to write back. I couldn't really write before because they gave me these pink pills that made my arms feel funny. And my head too. But I feel better now when they said I was allowed to write to you. So I am. I'd like to come back but I don't know when they will let me. I keep asking them. But everyone here is quite vague. I think they are trying to stop the voices with the pills. Which sort of works as it just empties me out. I hope the revision is going well. I'm sure you'll do brilliantly, Niche. Lots of love, Ruby. Ruby drew a small heart next to Niche's name and filled it in with red felt tip. You look well. My mouth's dry. I'll get you some water. My mouth's all dry and my head's all fuzzy. And look at my hands. Your hands are fine. They're shaking. They said that'll stop, Rubes. When? When you get used to the medication. Ruby, darling, we've, uh, we've got some bad news. What? We didn't know if we should tell you while you were in here. Is it Niche? Is Niche all right? Niche is fine. Oh, good. That's good. It's Mr McCarthy, sweetheart. What happened to him? He was knocked over on his bike. And he was killed. Oh. We're so sorry, Ruby. Right, OK. OK, right, yeah. Well, that sort of makes sense. Does it? Well, I had this feeling, this bad feeling, but because of the drugs, I don't... I don't dream like I did, so I didn't know what it was, but that must have been it, mustn't it? Peggy? Yeah? Do you ever think... Do you ever think that she might actually be psychic? No, I don't. Cos that is... That is the obvious explanation. Frank. You know, my family did have a history. I know, I know they did. Especially my grandmother Clara. Well, she was probably just mad. Well, she didn't act like somebody was mad. I just, I just can't believe in the idea of it. I can't. It doesn't make any sense to me. I feel as if we encourage Ruby to believe it. If we encourage that in any way, then we're just letting her down. We're just sort of... What's that word? What the doctor said, we're... Colluding. Colluding, that's it. We're not helping her get well or get over it. In the middle of August, Ruby came home. You're back? Yeah. How was it? I don't know. Missed you. Missed you too. Everyone's been asking me. Asking you what? Where's Ruby gone? Did you tell them? No, of course not. Why do you do that? Do what? Shake like that. It's the medication. Oh. Does it make me look weird? No, it just makes you look shaky. Did you get your results? Yeah. Well, tell me. Four A's. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. So you're going to be a doctor? Yeah. Well, congratulations. It felt funny saying goodbye to Nish. 
waving him off on an adventure and having no adventure of her own to go on. The street where they both lived felt very empty without him. Hello? Hello? Is anybody there? It's me. It's Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Hi. How are you? Okay. Yeah, okay. It's nice to hear from you. Is it? Is it really? Yeah, of course. Of course it is. What's it like at university? It's good. It's it's hard work, you know, because I'm, I'm not doing like a, a DOSA subject like art. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I was joking. Can I come and see you? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. You must be really busy. Yeah, but come. Come anyway. Will I be in the way? No. I don't want to show you up. You won't. I might. Ruby. Ruby caught the train from Colchester to London, with butterflies in her tummy that she couldn't explain. Because it was only Niche, who she had known since she was eight. Hiya. Hiya. How are you? The shaking stopped. What? You know, my hands don't shake. Well, not so much anyway. Oh. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, can I take your bag? Oh, no, that's all right. Thanks. What, what do you want to do? I don't know. There's this party, but we don't have to go. Do you want to go? If you do. I don't mind, whatever you want. We could go for a bit. If you want to. If it's awful, we'll just leave. Okay. Should you be drinking? Like, with the medication? No. Then what are you doing? I'm trying to have fun. No, I don't have a lot of fun, you know, Niche. I'm still at home with my mum and dad, looking at me all nervous, trying to work out was she crazy or not, going to therapy, going to the psychiatrist. So forgive me if I want to have a drink or two and have a bit of bloody fun. Let's go. Let's go somewhere else. Get something to eat. Oh, no, thanks. I want to dance. Let's dance. Who's she? She's a friend from home. Just a friend? Um, yeah. Do you want a cup of tea? Yes, please. You okay? Yeah. Yeah, I've just got a little bit of a headache. I'm sorry about what happened. It's all right. I don't know why I did it. It's all right. It's not. It's not really. It's not like we're even, you know, together, me and you. Oh, but that was the first time I've ever, you know... First time you've ever... Yeah. I don't even know his name. What's his name? Ralph. Ralph. He's an arsehole. I thought he was your friend. Well, he's not. I thought he was your mate. I mean, I live with him. Doesn't mean he's a mate. But that's why I... That's why you were. Why I... You know... Because he was your friend, or I thought he was. I think I thought, if I can't have you, then maybe I can have your friend. Who says you can't have me? Ruby stayed another night in London, and then travelled home on the train. Feeling different. Feeling like it might be alright in the end. You look... different. Do I? Yeah, you look happy. Would it be okay, would it be okay with you if, if I reapply? For what, love? For art school. I want to go to art school in London. I want to be near Niche. Okay, love. Is that all right? Of course it is. I always thought you didn't like him. Niche? Yeah. Why did you think that? Niche is lovely. He's absolutely lovely. Oh, well, I'll get it. Hello, this is the Tully House. Hello? Ruby, it's Mr McCarthy. Mr. McCarthy? Yeah. The one who died? Um, yes. Well, I just thought maybe... Maybe you were a different one, like his dad or his brother or some other one. Uh, no. Sorry, no, it is me. The dead one. OK. I'm so sorry to bother you. It's all right. It's just a quick call. OK. I just wanted to apologise. What for? For not believing you. Oh, right, yeah. I should have had more faith. Well, no one does really have faith, I mean, except Nish. Nish Patel, he, he always believed me. I think 
you need to chuck your medication away. I don't know if I can do that. You don't need it. But they think I do. Well, they're wrong. Yeah, but it's easy if I pretend they're right. Who is she talking to? Mr McCarthy. You still there? She's not. She is, or she thinks she is. Hello? I think we need to adjust your medication. You mean give me more drugs? Hmm. No, just uh, try some different ones. Great. After the phone call from Ruby's dead art teacher, Ruby spiralled into a deep sadness. That felt like a headache of the heart. That felt unshakable. That made her want to lie down and never get up again. Ruby! Ruby, you've got to get up! Ruby, sweetheart, sweetheart, you've got to get up. I'm not doing them, my exams. What? What? What do you mean? I don't think there's any point. Of course there is. Of course there's a point. I'm probably going to spend my life in and out of hospital, aren't I? Who says that? Everyone. Well, not us. We don't say that. I just think he's going to go one way and I'm going to go another. What What are you talking about? Niche. He's going to be a doctor. He's going to be normal and I'm going to be weird. Ruby. It's true though, isn't it? What about your art? I've gone off it. Gone off art? Yeah. Three days later, Frank found a note on the kitchen table. Where's Ruby? She's gone. Gone where? Gone for good. Till when? She wrote us a note. Dear Mum and Dad, I don't think I want it to be like this. I don't think I want to be living here and sleeping in my bed and eating food and taking loads of different pills from loads of different bottles. Don't worry about me. I'll be fine. Love from Ruby. But, but where's she gone? I don't know. Oh, Frank. Ruby stayed in touch with postcards, one every few weeks. I'm fine, don't worry about me, it's much better like this, etc. Then about a year after she had first left, she reappeared on the doorstep. Hiya, Dad. Mum. Ruby? Hello, Ruby. <laughs> I'd like you to meet someone. Oh. <laughs> She's mine. She's yours. She's all mine. <laughs> That's amazing. Can I hold her? Of course you can. <laughs> She's called Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah. Do you like it? Yeah, I do. Yeah. <laughs> She's a lovely baby. Can we stay? Can we stay a few days? Of course you can! Yeah, of course you can. Oh, that'd be brilliant. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're welcome any time. You know that. Why won't she talk to us? You've got to give her time. Why can't she say who the father is? What does it matter who the father is? I just want to know where she's been, what she's been doing, where she sleeps at night, if she eats enough. She looks well. She does. The baby looks well. <laughs> the baby's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a grandchild. Yeah. I'm thrilled. I'm <laughs> thrilled to bits. But the house was full of anxiety and Ruby felt like the walls were coming in, and she couldn't stand it. Being so closely observed, she couldn't breathe and she knew she had to go again. I'm going to go, Dad. Where? Somewhere else. Where? I've got some friends with a big, a big old farmhouse. It's sort of a commune, I suppose, but they're nice. They're good people, Dad. Well, where is it? Where's what? This farmhouse, where is it? I'll send you a postcard, Dad. I want you to keep in touch. I will. Promise me. I promise. This time she disappeared for longer, for nearly three years, and the postcards to Peggy and Frank were less frequent, even less detailed, always apologetic, and they both broke their hearts over the loss of her. But for Ruby, for Ruby herself, the distance was a good thing. Ruby began to thrive learned how to live with who she was and what she was. And when she was ready, when she was really, really ready, she came home again. Ruby. Hiya, Dad. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, yeah. Is this, is this Tuesday? Yeah. Hello, Tuesday. Hello. Well, I'm your granddad. I'm your granddad Frank. Hello, granddad Frank. <laughs> Hello. 
It's lovely to see you. It's lovely to see you. You look well. I am well. I'm really well, Dad. I found my way. That's great, Ruby. Can I leave Tuesday with you? For a couple of hours? Um, yeah. There's this thing I've got to do. And when I've done it, I'm going to come back and get her. But I want to. I, I think it's something I need to do without her. Sure. Okay, sure. Thanks, Dad. Ruby. Yeah? I've done a lot of thinking, you know, while you've been gone, and I've had a sort of a, sort of a change of heart. About what? Well, the thing is, this is the thing, I, uh, I think we did you wrong. I think we should have believed you. I think all the doctors and the psychologists and everything, we shouldn't have listened to them. We should have listened to you. I think you might be very, very gifted. Not just with your art. I know you're gifted with your art. I think you might be as psychic as your great-grandmother. As your great-grandmother, Clara Tully. She was very famous. Was she? And I should have told you about her, but I didn't think... I didn't used to think, you know, that she was real, but... But maybe she was real, and it seems like... But it seems like you were real too. And we filled you up with all those ideas that you're crackers and you might not be. You really might not be. And I just wanted to say I'm so sorry, Ruby. I'm so sorry that I let you down. I love you, Dad. I love you to bits. And you just said yes? Well, yeah. And when's she supposed to be back? In a couple of hours. A couple of hours? Yeah. And when was that? A couple of hours ago. But she's still not back? Well, no, obviously. Frank. What? You're so naive. Sorry? She's done a runner. What? She's left the child and gone. She wouldn't do that. She'll be back, Peggy. She'll be back any minute. But she wasn't back any minute. Or any time soon after. And Peggy was confirmed in all her suspicions. And she was damned if this child, this other child, was going to turn out the same way. From the very beginning, Peggy was going to get this one right. Here you go. For me? That jumper. Oh. Nanny. That mummy. Oh, that's nice. That's lovely, sweetheart. Mummy. <laughs> Nanny. Gandhi. <Come. laughs> but what happened to Ruby? What happened to me? I disappeared in 1983, and no one managed to work it all out for another 30 years. I had to wait 30 years for someone to discover the truth. That someone was my daughter. In Ruby's Shoes by Katie Hymns, Ruby was played by Nell Herrin and Amy Metcalf and Niche by Leon Human and Hamza Jitua. Peggy was played by Lisa Stevenson and Frank by David Seddon. The Doctor was Michael Burtonshaw, Miss Violet was Cara Saliri and Mr McCarthy was Arthur Hughes. Emily was played by Georgie Fuller and Tuesday by Rosa Yevtyshenko. Ruby's Shoes was directed by Jessica Dromgoul. Mm -hmm.